No generation, yours included, will ever have to fear this disease as much as mine did. And I knew that that was true, and that kind of became the definition of my mission. It is my distinct honor and, and pleasure to be interviewing you today. Let's, let's just start by telling the audience who you are and, and, and something about yourself. Well, my name is Charles Sabine, and for 26 years I worked for NBC News, the American network, mostly in wars and conflicts for that time, first as a producer and a writer, and then as a, a correspondent. So that was kind of where my head was when I had a test result saying that I had the positive gene for Huntington's disease. So Charles, as I was uh, prepping for this interview with you, uh, you've spoken all over the world, but what struck me is this, your experience at the Vatican and the Pope. So tell me about them. Yes, yeah, so I discovered when I was trying to help with an organization called Factor H, that no world leader, amazingly, had ever said the words Huntington's disease on a world stage. And certainly no world leader uh, uh, had ever embraced someone on the stage with Huntington's disease. And indeed, I, I knew uh, of a girl being had to leave school because her classmate had been told to stay away from her because if they touched her, they might, their mothers, their mothers told them, uh, catch the disease. That then expanded from that story of those families from you know, Venezuela, Colombia, and Buenos Aires, into the Pope then saying that he wanted to meet 300 people with Huntington's disease, 300. That's what it became. And, and it became this an amazing event, the biggest gathering by far ever of Huntington's patients under one, under one roof. Uh, and instead of just holding up the banner, which I wanted him to do to say, you know, hidden no more, he said the words uh, on a global platform, it is time now for the world, world to realize that Huntington's disease should be hidden no more. You're an Emmy Award winning uh, TV journalist. You've seen the, world's, the worst of, of things in the world. Um, what was your first reaction when you were diagnosed with this disease and and um, how did you cope with this? Huntington's disease was something which I had not heard of when I first discovered it in 1994 when my father who had been quite sick was uh, one of the first people uh, to be tested positive for the gene. At that time my brother and I neither of us knew uh, about the disease, but we discovered very quickly that uh, not only is it a horrible mixture of the symptoms of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and cancer and schizophrenia all rolled into one, but that it's also genetic, that uh, our children would have a 50-50 chance of, carry, of having the gene. Mm -hmm. But it took me some uh, 10 years before I actually tested myself testing positive, and the neurologist who gave me that test result said, uh, Charles, there's nothing you can do about this disease. Just live your life as well as you can. So uh, what I then chose, I decided to change course uh, and move from the conflicts that I was covering for NBC to taking on the uh, extraordinary discrimination and stigma surrounding Huntington's disease. Now, how do you compare the stigma of Huntington's disease, the shame of Huntington's disease, to everything you've covered or anything, the, the worst that you've covered in your journalism career? The dignity has been lost, you know, 
no, no there's nothing less dignified uh, than the state of you know what my father had to to go through uh, you know in the last days of you know of, of, of his well not even the last days in the middle days to be honest you know being sort of laughed at and you know so on and all of that stuff that goes with it so dignity has been certainly challenged and when certainly 18 years ago there was certainly no no hope around the disease with with your journey so far with uh, the genetic testing that's positive for huntington's disease what is the most surprising or unexpected thing that you've encountered so far about huntington's disease or or living with this gene what i've actually discovered is something that's just pretty new which is that there is a lot of data to show that actually until they become sick people with Huntington's disease uh, are in fact quite exceptional in many ways they have they have more gray matter for example they tend to be higher achievers amazingly and um, we don't really know understand the link here but it's an amazing thing but people with Huntington's disease have an 80% resistance to all cancers. So Charles, what a journey you've had and with, with Huntington's disease and your, and your, and I'm sorry to hear about your, your dad and your brother and, and a lot of your relatives. Uh, but it seems like you, you made the most out of, of things and started this hidden no more. Uh, please tell me about this. I started this initially a, uh, initiative called Hidden No More when we went to the Sea of the Pope but then that became a foundation and now I have a foundation which is the only organization which is specifically trying to deal with that aspect of it there are wonderful organizations around the world who are you know trying to do, trying to help um, families with the day-to-day -day, you know existence of the disease and scientific organizations who are who are doing terrific work as well.